We're back again on the Mark II drag car. We had problems with the, in the last video or previously where the other 3.6 block that we had actually spun a rod bearing. I bought one from the junkyard. See, there's writing all over it and it's got the little turkey baster things. But um, I, I, you can see I already have taken it apart. Took it apart on my lunch break. Pulled the head off. Um, I also I had already pulled the pan off and double check because I did not want to see a spun rod bearing. So I felt around, didn't feel anything wrong with the rod bearings. Now there was a little bit of metal in the pan, but that was definitely because of like the timing guides and all that, because all the timing stuff was broken. But even though it was broken, uh, the pickup still was probably, I'd say 90% um, unclogged. We're just gonna tear into this. You can see I, I got only got a couple bolts in here just because I wanted to take it apart. So I've gone through, pulled the oil pump off and cleaned that up. You can see that it's up top and it's actually like a gear style. So this is pretty nice. And then the intermediate shaft, all these teeth are good. So that saves me another like hundred bucks. So that's good. You see the pickup, there's a little bit of stuff in there, but it was pretty clean. We just have to clean all that up, clean that stuff out. And right now what we're doing before we do anything else is we're just gonna turn it over and uh, keep cleaning off all the pistons. Uh, this is something weird where the pistons are different from odd side to even side. So like right here, this one's like a Fu Manchu. And then this one is like a, a dumb smiley face. But anyway, uh, we're cleaning, I'm trying to clean the front. I'm gonna get like a soft bristle brush and more brake clean and just scrub this all down. After we clean all these up, then we're gonna get to putting all the rod bearings in. I got new ARP rod bearings. I'll show you guys in a second. The camera's gonna die, of course. So yeah, we'll just clean all this stuff up. We just used a green Scotch Brite for all this with brake clean. It worked really good. And we took everything off the front of the block, cleaned all that up. So now it's not horribly grimy anymore. Got the new water pump on. So all this is set to go. I had to order all the seals for the oil pump pickup. This is a special one, but I did manage to clean it all out. And then I ordered the seals for the crossover pickup tube, but only one came in. So we'll have to put those on in the end. And I have to reassemble the oil pump on these. They're in the inter intermediate shaft. Whereas before they would have like an Allen key drive all the way at the top. Now the pump is actually up there. We just got to put this back together and lock tight all the bolts. That way nothing falls out. So that's what we're going to do now. After I put all this on, then we're going to get to the rod bearings and rod bolts. Pumps all together. You have Allen bolts and Torx bolts. So they're two different ones, so just be aware. Where the intermediate shaft sprocket points up, and then this lower notch, that's gonna be for when you put the chain on, it'll have a, like a colored link that'll go on that. This is all good, I'm leaving it loose because you gotta take these off anyway to put the lower chain assembly on. Now we're gonna be onto the rod bearings. I bought King rod bearings. Here's the part number right here. Can you actually see it? I really don't know what the series is. It's an XP series. That's all I know. They're coated front and back, I believe. The OEM 3.6 bearings actually come coated. OEM ones would work, but I want to rev it high, so I think these will be the way to go for that. And then for ARP rod bolts, this is just your normal VR6 kit. 40 foot pounds is the kit instructions, so that's what we're going to be doing. You put ARP lube on the the bottom of the bolt heads and the shoulder section and the threads and you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, I do have my good torque wrench here. So when I break these original ones loose, I'll let you guys see what the original torque is because usually it's like 
40 to 50 foot pounds anyway. Every time I've ever done these, I've never had an issue because I always replace rod bearings. I've never just put these in with OEM rod bearings. I always put a brand new set in, put them all together, and I've never had an issue. You just get two of them pointed up, do one at a time because these caps only go to one rod. So I'll break this loose, take it apart, pull the rod bearings out, clean everything up, and then uh, we'll grease it, put it back together, torque this with the new rod bearing set, and then we'll spin it over. You always do it every single time. So do one rod, spin it over, because if anything's tight, you'll know there's an issue, go back and address it. They're crazy. I have this set to 40, and I have it going in reverse, so we'll see how tight these actually are. So it broke loose about 43 foot pounds. Like this one. Check and see if there's any difference. This one broke loose at about 40.7. First one. Take it out. So here's what I was talking about about the bearings. You can see there's no coating on the outside but these are coated from the factories. The King Race bearings are actually like only like 60 or 70 bucks, so OEM rod bearings are really expensive. I farted. <laughs> and now you gotta get the bottom one out, down just a little bit, and then grab, push the rod bearing with a screwdriver. See, since I pushed it down, uh, it's up and over on this side, so I can just kind of grab it, and it'll just, hang out on the crank and I pull this off usually on the top bearing you'll always see the discoloration because that's uh it, you know that's when the explosion happens and it's pushing it down so explosion happens and it kind of cranks it down so that's why you'll always see it kind of a little bit more wear up there so that's nothing to be concerned about always just take your fingers uh, it's best to do this stuff with no gloves on that way you can feel stuff and you can make sure you're not getting dirt on anything see i did push the piston down some more the rod and now i have access to put the rod bearing in so these are tang just like the oem ones so you just got to pop it down get it close and then once it once i bring it up to the rod that's when i'll i'll center it make sure it's it's dead on do it with a screwdriver when it's up here but everything's already clean so you can just Put down in there. Here's a Nerf dart on a screwdriver. This will probably reach. There we go. Just pull it up. Double check that the bearings are all the way down. Touching both sides. I usually just tap it, tap them both sides with a screwdriver. So, there we go. This side was a little up. Now they're both matching. I only want to put stuff on the front. Make sure you line up the tangs. Tangs back here. You never want to actually like tighten it one at a time. Just get it in can tight. All right, so it's set the 40. Do it in like increments. Just doing it up to like 20 first. Now just grab a 27 for the front crank bolt and then I'll just turn it over. It's perfectly smooth. No tight spots at all. So now we can uh, move on to the next one.
I got all the new bearings in. Every single rod bearing I pulled out, perfect. These are all the upper ones. They always have a little bit of wear, but everything was perfect. I'm pretty confident down here. This is specifically so we can rev high. We're gonna be using some really big cams, so hopefully this will stay together. I, I'm not sure how far those cams will go, at least to 8,000. Uh, one thing we are just gonna do so I can show you guys is how to put the lower timing chain section on. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we got it on TDC. How you tell is down here. There's a regular tooth and that one is knurled down. Uh, this one right here at the, and it needs to be following the main cap line. So follow the main cap line. And you can see that one's kind of knurled down. So you know you're exactly on TDC right there. This has to be on first with the, uh, with the chain. The lower chain doesn't have any marks. Again, you just make sure that the crank is lined up with that main cap. So you just throw it on, put the guide in, and then your timing mark up here is on the oil pump gear itself. So this intermediate shaft has a little arrow. This must face up. If it doesn't face up, then your timing will be 180 out from your cam. So you'll have cam faults and stuff like that. So put the gear in, slide the, this, you can leave this loose for now. It's not a big deal. And then just get the chain in place. So now you see this is lined up dead on with that uh, notch up there. This notch down here is for the upper chain. Then you can take your chain tensioner. I always put blue Loctite on these. Everything's tight. Here's the intermediate shaft bolt. And I'm gonna put Loctite down here. I'm just doing this off memory of what a uh, 12 valve gets. And it's usually 74 foot pounds. This is really tough to do. You gotta have somebody on the other side holding it on while you torque this. You cannot hit this with an impact gun. If you do, it'll break the chain guides. So now everything's in time. You see the neural tooths there. This is still in time there. So now you can pull the chain and you're all good to go. We're all done with this episode, guys. Rotating assembly, short block is totally done. If you guys like what you saw today, you may like, comment, subscribe. And uh, in the next episode, hopefully we'll be picking up the cylinder head. Then we can finally get to putting, finishing the engine all up. So thanks for watching.